Good evening, friends. On behalf of our Director General, Sabi Sachi Mukherjee, I welcome you all to the YouTube channel of CSMPS, our online platform for lectures, programs, and talks. Today, I have the privilege of introducing a speaker who needs very little introduction, not just in Mumbai, but in India and in the wide academic world of art history. Dr. Devangana Desai is a remarkable person. She is an eminent art historian on the ancient and medieval Indian art and has researched and written widely on religious imagery and iconography. She is one of CSMBS's stalwart trustees and also serves on the board of the Calico Museum. Her knowledge is almost encyclopedic and her writings have been considered seminal in various fields of Indian art history. She has mentored a large number of students and researchers. Dr. Desai has served as the Honorable Vice President of the Asiatic Society in Mumbai and also been the editor of its journal from 1992 to 2009. She has also been a long-standing chairperson of the Museum Society of Mumbai from 1983 to 1992. She has received the prestigious Hirayama Prize in 2015 for the totality of researchers in the field of Indian art. Here at our museum, she generously sponsored the reorganization of our sculpture gallery, dedicating it to her late husband, Mr. Jayant V. Desai. More recently, she gave an endowment to the CSMBS that supports research and dissemination of the ancient, medieval, and pre-modern art, architecture, culture, and history of India. We will now hear Dr. Desai on a project and a subject that she has dedicated her entire academic career to. Khajuraho, the wonder that it was. This lecture has been organized in collaboration with the Museum Society of Mumbai, who continue to keep alive the world of art history for audiences in the city. We thank all the Museum Society members for their support and collaboration. Thank you. Hello, good evening. I first visited Khajuraho in 1964 with my husband Jayan and our friend Dilip Purohit. We went there by, from Jasi by car, reached in the evening, had the glimpse of the temples in the dim evening light and was awestruck seeing even from distance. Lovely temple site, Khajuraho in Chhatapur district of Madhya Pradesh has more than 25 temples in varied state of preservation. These were built under the of the powerful Chandela royal dynasty between 900 and 1200. You see here the magnificent temple, the Lakshmana, which you see here, this one, the, uh, dedicated to Vishnu in his composite form of Vaikuntha. The UNESCO recognized this marvelous place as a world heritage site in 1986. It was on my second visit, while I was looking for the material to write a paper on erotic sculpture of Khajuraho for an international seminar at Philadelphia, that I noticed a conscious design in planning of the sculptural scheme by architects of the three principal temples of the site. But while looking for the placement of erotic figures, the placement of divinities and then their configurations in the scheme of the temple attracted my attention. There was, it seemed, a creative mind working to pro project concepts through the sculptural scheme. This opened a fresh approach to the viewing of these temples. As you utter the word Khajuraho, people associated with it erotic sculpture. Khajuraho has wrongly become synonymous with erotic sculpture. These figures are not even 10% of the sculptural scheme of these temples. More than nine tenths of the sculptures represent divinities and their de and decorative figures. Because we look, look only at erotic sculpture, we have missed serious concern with the Khajuraho builders have shown with religion and philosophy. There is a strong conceptual basis in iconic scheme of these temples, which is re uh, 
the icons and their configuration. Yoga, bhakti, that is devotion and nana knowledge find expression in icons of Kajuraho. There are literally hundreds of figures holding manuscripts in their hands, suggesting importance of knowledge and learning. The earliest drawing of Khajuraho were prepared in 1852 by General F.C. Mezi, which you see here in the slide. These are preserved in the British Library, London. You see here the Shiv Sagar tank. a landmark of the site. This error is not coming here. Yeah, this is the tank, which also Maisie has shown. And this is what we are doing. Now, Kajuraho, the medieval temple town, was known in inscriptions as Kharjura Vahaku. The site turned into a great temple town from mid 10th century. The temples occupied three zones of Kajuraho. These are the three zones. One is the Western zone, this is the Eastern zone, and there are these other temples uh, near this Khuda rivulet. Now, the Western zone consists of these temples built by the Lord family. These are the Lakshmana, Vishwanath, Kandariya Mahadev, Chitragupta, and those built by the Jain merchants are situated in the Eastern zone and other temples of Shiva and Vishnu are built near the Kudar rivulet in the southern zone of the town. Only the Shakta Yogini temple, which is here, this one, was constructed away from the main Hindu group in the southwest of the Shiv Sagar tank. It is interesting to note that Ibn Battuta the Arab traveler visited Kajuraho in 1335 to witness the yogis and their magic. We see here the Chandela king and queen performing religious ritual. By mid 10th century, the Chandela family became powerful and amassed wealth. They not only patronized temples, but also encouraged poetry, drama, dance and music. Two of the rulers were themselves poets. Kajuraho was highly Sanskritized and reveals a sophisticated court culture. Knowledge of Sanskrit language and grammar was highly appreciated by the elite. The Naika on the right side holds a manuscript and makes a gesture with her right hand. You can see this. She's making some gesture and this is the manuscript. The sculpture suggests that women were literate. We see here a dance teacher and pupils. Architect or sutradhara were respected. Here we see an architect. He's teaching his uh, students. And these along with religious acharyas who have given us magnificent temples. Pun on the name of the town Kharjura Vahaka, which you read here, Kharjura Vahaka. Kharjura means date palm tree, as you see in this slide here. But it also means a scorpion, which you see on the leg of this female figure. There are several uh, Apsaras or Surasundaris with scorpion on their leg at Kajuraho. This motive, however, is not listed in Shilpa texts. The religious movement of Tantrism, which gave importance to Shakti or female energy in the religious system and rituals, influenced the cults at Kajuraho. But it was not the extreme form of Tantrism associated with skull-bearing Kapalika sect. It was mod uh, moderate Tantric order that respected Brahmanas and the Vedas as inscriptions of Kajuraho temples te testify. Of the 25 temples, the temples were dedicated to 
Vishnu, 10 were dedicated to Vishnu, 8 to Shiva, 1 to Surya, 1 to 64 yoginis, and 5 to Jain of the Digambara sect. Large inscribed image of Buddha now in the site museum suggests a Buddhist establishment at Kajuraho in mid 9th century. The Buddha, the colossal image of Buddha, Shakyamuni, seated in Padmasana, as you see him here, in earth touching mudra, on the lotus pedestal here, is inscribed. The well-known formula of Buddhist faith, ye dharma hetu prabhavaho. Taking both the stylistic and paleographic grounds, we may date the sculpture to about middle of the 9th century. The halo was decorated. This is the halo, only part is remaining. It was decorated uh, with... Uh, scroll and lotus design, as you see in this. And that reminds us of the ornamental waistband of the famous Sachi torso of Bodhisattva, now in the Victorian Albert Museum, London, datable to 8th, 9th century. The Jain Digambara sect was supported by merchants of Kajuraho. We see here the Jina Adinath with this luncheon or recognition of the bull there as his mount. There are as many as 200 images of Jinas at Kajuraho. This image is among the early Jain finds at Kajuraho. Of the 24 Jinas, at least 15 Jinas are represented here. The largest number of the images seen in about 60 examples are those of Adinath or Rishabhnath, the first Jina. On the right, we see the Jain Yaksha couple. Hanuman, the monkey god. This is one of the earliest inscribed images of Hanuman with dedicatory inscription of C922. This is found at, this is worshipped at Kajuraho. This is Bhairava, which is also an early image. There is an open air sanctuary, unique open air sanctuary, situated away from the main group of temples, the Yogini Shrine. It was dedicated to the 64 or Chaushata Yoginis, which are manifestations of the great goddess. It is constructed entirely of granite blocks. Unlike the other temples of Kajuraho, which are constructed of fine stone, tomb. It is one of the earliest shrines of Kajuraho dated to circa 900. The sanctuary is erected on a low rocky mountain. You see here, it consists of 66 cells. Each of the cells earlier housed an image of a yogini while the larger one had an image of Durga Mahishasura Mardini, which was inscribed with the label Hingalaja. When Major Cunningham visited the sanctuary in 1865, he found only three images in C2, the goddess Hingalaja in the principal cell and the two matrikas, Brahmani and Maheshwari, which were in these cells adjacent to it. These images are now in the site museum as the, also the dancing Ganesha who faced the Yogini sanctuary. This one, dancing Ganesha. Cunningham saw this six feet tall image facing the Yogini shrine. Ganesha is invoked for successful propitiation of the mothers. The Ganesha is eight arm and holds a serpent 
in its two upper, you can see only part of the serpent there, which is broken now. And uh, he's holding these two, was he's holding these two, so uh, the serpent. The three feet tall, eight armed goddess Hingalaja is represented as Maisha Sura Mardini. What is important to note, notice is the powerful manner in which she has held the buffalo demon upside down, holding it with, uh, with its hind legs, as you see here. Hingalaj and the name is associated with the goddess of Baluchistan on the Makran coast, now Pakistan. It was the most sacred center of pilgrimage for the ascetics of the Natha cult. The Varaha Shrine is a splendid icon of Bor, which you see there, or Varaha, the third incarnation of Vishnu. The god Vishnu takes the form of wild boar to save the earth goddess Prithvi from the nether region. It's a moment of celebration of victory. The Chandela king Yashovarman must have installed the Varaha as a symbol of his victory over this overlord Pratihara king. The massive boar Varaha is cut out of a single piece of stone. It is eight feet, nine inches in length. He, he bears on his body more than 675 figures. Here you see in 12 neatly cowed rows. Deep parlors or regions of space are on his four feet. On these feet, there are these dick palas. Then you see, we see planetary divinities, seven matrikas, Ganesh, 12 Adityas, 11 Rudras, river goddesses, oceans, and so on. Goddess Saraswati is seen on its muzzle. Brahma is on its head on this side. The Varaha represents the Vishwarupa, the cosmic all compassing form of Vishnu. We see here on the right, an early temple of sixth century at Devgarh in central India. And on the left, a mature temple of Khajuraho for comparison, the Vishwanatha temple built by King Dangadeva in 999. At Devgarh in the sixth century, the wall on each side has only one niche, as we see here, this one, with Sheshashai image. The principal divinity in the sanctum is represented on the three sides of the temple. With the passage of time and growing ritual requirement, the temple expanded in size. There were additional halls for dance and food offerings. Like here, you, I will be showing you the plan. These are different halls which are there. Wall surfaces also expanded. The walls acquired many more projections and indentations. You see here on the plan, the different uh, 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 halls which are there. It consists of a porch, a mandapa, a mahamandapa inside here, this antarala or passage vestibule where the devotee stands for darshan or, or viewing of the divinity and garbha guru or sanctum. Also circumambulation path is there taking pradakshina or circumambulation around the sanctum. Indentations and projections are carried upwards from the plinths up to the superstructure. Here you can see in three parts, the plinth and superstructure, the wall and the superstructure. These accommodated a considerable number of figural sculpture of divine hierarchy. The families and retinues of gods were expanding along with developments with religious cult. Cunningham counted 602 sculptures and on the Vishwanath temple and 646 on the exterior and 226 in the interior of the Kandariya Mahadev temple. We can see the three divisions of the wall. 
on the elevation. And the Vishwanath temple built in 999 has a long Sanskrit inscription which records the name of its master architect, Chicho. He is described as well versed in Vishwakarma Shastra. On the right, we see the Vastu Shastra terminology of the Khajuraho temple, which Mr. Krishna Dev of Archaeological Survey had uh, drawn this diagram and shown us from the base to the superstructure to the finial of the temple, we see correspondence of textual terms and architectural terms in the architectural elements of the temple. The Vishwanatha temple with its Nandi Mandapa, the full figure, Nandi Mandapa facing the temple. The grandest image of Khajuraho in the sanctum of the Chaturbhuj temple, which is nine feet in height, the sublime ascetic god is in jata or matted hair, which you see here, is four armed. The handsome ascetic god stands in a peculiar stance with the weight on the left foot, resembling Krishna Yogeshwara. This, the figure possibly represents the ascetic god Narayana Vishnu, associated with Pancharatra and bhakti or devotion. Now we see a closer view of the two temples, the Lakshmana or Vaikuntha temple, which will be followed by the Kandarya Mahadev dedicated to Shiva. The inscription slab which you see here on the right mentions that King Yashovarman specially built the temple to shelter the, pre, uh, the precious image of God Vaikuntha that he captured from the overlord which was originally from Chamba, just, just in the Himalayan region. Architecturally, the temple is one of the finest of a North Indian or Nagara temple. The master architect of the temple has much more to convey through the iconic scheme and by the configuration of images. This is the ground plan of the temple and the image which is here in the sanctum, the Vaikuntha image. It's a majestic image, four feet high of God Vaikuntha, a composite form of Vishnu, who has the placid face in the center, flanked on the right by a lion or Narsimha face, and war or varaha face on his left on this side. So on his three, this is a three-faced image, placid face, human face, uh, lion face, and boar face. The deity Vaikuntha was an associated with a religious system called Pancharatra. He's a powerful god and mentioned in the inscription as the enemy of demons, Daityari. He is surrounded by avatars. There are these avatars which are shown here on the uh, side and mentioned also in the inscriptions. And uh, there are sub emanations of the god. Prithvi, the earth goddess, she is shown here below his feet in central Indian mode. Here she is. Very few Vaikuntha temples have survived. Kajuraho's Vaikuntha temple deepens our understanding of the pantheon of God Vaikuntha. You see here the sanctum doorway. Uh, doorway in India is traditionally decorated with auspicious motifs in order to protect the building against evil influences. The text Bhrat Samhita in the 6th century describes auspicious motifs to be depicted on door gems of Khajuraho, on door gems of temples. But there are certain typical depictions on door gems, such as the avatars of Vishnu in the Lakshmana temple, which are recommended in the Pancharatra text, Hayashirsha Pancharatra. On, the, on this side, left, left jaw, this jaw, sorry. Here we see the 
Matsya Avatara, fish incarnation of Vishnu, who saves the four Vedas, and these Vedas are shown with four heads, personified heads in sculpture. Balancing of the opposites. On the antarala or the passage with joints, with joints, uh, the hall and the sanctum. Goddess Parvati, here what you see, she is placed here. She is shown um, performing penance, which you see in many temples, of course. In, of India, but in Khajuraho through configuration of images, the artist is conveying the idea of balancing of the opposites. Two incompatible animals in the atmosphere of penance grow, they are shown near her feet. Goddess Chandika is shown on the left and uh, meditating goddess Tripura on the right. So these two opposing goddesses are also shown as the animals near her feet. Southern cardinal niches, which you see of the Garbhagruha, this wall. Southern cardinal niches in the schematic diagram, two registers, Varaha and Purma. Varaha, the boar god, the Varaha aspect of Vishnu and Purma avatara are shown here. On this altar, there is a gentle-like plan of the sanctum, and there are eight dikpalas, or uh, guarding the eight corners of the Parbagruha. The, the god Vaikuntha is surrounded by altars and emanations. Now, this west wall, which we'll be seeing here, the Shweta Dvipa devotees who are shown, which is a very important uh, depiction. Narsiva is seen here and above are these uh, Shweta Dvipa devotees who were worshipped, I mean, who are the glorious ekantic or single-minded devotees in the mythic Shweta Dvipa. All males, brilliant and pure beings, they are shown with halos. This is a story in the two chapters of the Pancharatra Mahatmya and Shweta Dvipa Varnana in the Shanti Parva, Parva of the Mahabharat and was so important that it is repeated in the Vishnu Dharmottara Purana. But to my knowledge, nowhere else in sculpture or painting we see this theme. The scene represents bhakti. These worshippers are single-minded devotees of Narayana. They have no interest in sensual pleasure. Vishnu as Rahasya Dhari, very important image, very rarely seen such an image. With raised index finger on his lips, it is not Maunavrati. He is not, he is saying Vishnu is instructing his devotees by this eloquent hand gesture to observe silence so as not to expose the secrets or rahasya of the doctrine which he is expounding. The Pancharatra texts often present their teachings in the form of dialogue between the God and sages of devotees. And here we see this Vishnu Rahasya Sari making this gesture of uh, uh, silence with his forefinger, as if adjoining his devotees not to reveal the rahasya of ultimate knowledge to undisciplined persons. This is an extraordinary image, captures that moment who has raised his forefinger near his lips and enjoins the devotee to uh, not to reveal the secrets of the doctrines. Now, this is the Vishwarupa of Shamalaji. The whole manifestation emanates from the central body of uh, Vishnu, which we see here. And uh, Max, T.S. Maxwell has written on this image. He has written in detail. And there are altogether 21 images in the oval form of an under or cosmic egg. 
in this Vishwarupa image. And here I'm trying to say that when you see Vaikuntha Vishnu through the door, you see him surrounded by his uh, emanations and his avatars, and the uh, and we notice several uh, of the uh, Vishnu of uh, us avatars, and the total form conveyed by different aspects of Vishnu and their configurations of images offers a vision of Vishwarupa, the boundless universal form of Vishnu, like what you see on the slide on the left. On the exterior of the temple, this is the Vaikuntha temple plan. On the exterior, you see there are nine images in the uh, beaches here. Other six, uh, Ganesha is there, which you see here. On the other side is Durga. And Surya is seen in the western niche. But who are these other six images, which was not, they were not earlier identified. These are handsome deities Jata, as you see them here, holding manuscript in hand, in their uh, left hand. And these were the boon giving uh, gesture of the right hand. These are, and they have goose. This is the goose mound and a lamb mound. These are the six handsome divinities along with Surya, Ganesh and Durga on the circle of the Lakshmana temple. Each of these divinities with Jata Mukuta holds manuscripts in upper left hand and a rosary along with Varada or Gnana Mudra in lower right hand. I looked up the iconography of several of my mythological figures and it is the frog. Here you see a frog as a mount, which gave me clue to the figure being planet Shukra or Venus. A frog is the Vahana of planet Shukra in sculptural depictions and also in textual tradition. So if the figure with frog mount represents Shukra, the rest of the six figures and Surya being group or collective divinities would also represent the other grahas or planetary divinities. The identification of the seven figures or as grahas brings us into the field of iconology concerned with the meaning and context of images. If you see these figures, of seven grahas in the context of their placement of the temple, you can notice that they encircle the temple. They are encircling the temple and form as it were a graha mandala around the temple. And further of great significance is the imagery of grahas encircling the temple. It makes the temple image as Mount Meru, the cosmic mountain in the center of the universe around which the planets revolve. The master architect has thus presented two cosmic imageries. As we saw earlier, he has presented the temple as Vishwarupa, the cosmic form of Vishnu. The temple celebrates Vishnu in the as the universe. And the architect also adds another cosmic dimension by presenting the temple as Mount Meru, the center of the universe. We come to another temple of Khajuraho built in circa 1030 by Chandela King Vidyadharo. The Kandariya Mahadev temple is not only architecturally magnificent, but it is also conceptually remarkable. It's a highly evolved and refined example of the Hindu temple. In some of the well planned Shiva temples of early India, Tela Kremrish, Dorish Srinivasan, and others have noticed three levels of Shiva's presence in sculptural imagery. These three levels, as mentioned by Kramrish, are Shiva as unmanifest avyakta, present in the Shiva Linga in the sanctum, to a manifest, unmanifest Sadashiva, who is Vyakta Vyakta, and three manifest avyakta, who is 
seen uh, is the with the fifth aspect of Shiva. In, at Elephanta, when Kramrish gave a lecture uh, on uh, sh at uh, sh on Shiva symposium, she talked on Elephanta and the three levels of uh, Shiva which we see there. The, the Shiva Linga, which is sign of unmanifest, which you see there in the sanctuary inside. The second aspect is Sadashiva with these three faces, un manifest, unmanifest Shiva, and Mahesha, which is the manifest aspect. When I heard Krambrish at the Shiva Symposium in a presentation of the Elephanta Cave, it occurred to me that in the Kandarya Mahadev temple also, we notice these three levels of manifestation. So I researched on the iconic theme of the temple. You see these three levels, Shiva unmanifest as Shiva Linga. Then Sadashiva is also there as manifest unmanifest with four legged Chatushpada and manifest Shiva several images of Mahesha which are seen in the temple. This is a unique image, Sadashiva Chatushpada, image with four legs, which was installed by Acharya Urdhva Shiva. His Chatushpada, four feet, four parts of a treatise. These are Gnanapada or knowledge Charya Pada conduct daily rituals, Kriya Pad activities and methods of worship, and Yoga Pada. So these four Padas signify these four parts of a treatise. Architects in medieval India even uh, seem to have been guided by Acharyas, particularly in matters of placement of images and requirements of temple worship. A very significant sculptural panel is recently excavated from the Bija Mandal Mound of Kajuraho, depicting on the right a bearded Acharya whom you see here with a manuscript in his hand, as if giving instructions, a scribe seated near him, and as if uh, uh, and artisans carrying on uh, uh, objects on the left. cave-like and mountain-like, which you see here, the Kandarya Mahadev stands majestically. The Shiva Linga is installed exactly below the finial of the tower. Below this finial is Shiva Linga. Section Kandarya and Section Lakshmana, the two temples. The Linga described in Chandela inscription as Jagatah Mola Stambha, primordial pillar of the universe in installed exactly in the center of the Garbha Guru. The finial of the Shikhar is here is Shiva Linga exactly above is the finial. The points, the center of the sanctum uh, of the uh, of the sanctum on the ground level and the finial in the sky are connected by a vertical axis. It is the cosmic axis which connects the heaven and earth. But in the Lakshmana temple, where there is icon, Pratima, the image is always placed off center. It is not in the center. This is always the case in, uh, in temples, Sakala ima with images uh, that is manifestations of Vishnu, Surya, Jina, or other divinity. The finial does not lie exactly above the manifested image. Only Nishkala Linga, that is supposed to be formless, as you see in the Kandarya Mahadev, has is in the center of the sanctum. I am saying this on the basis of my observations of the ground plans of medieval temples built in accordance with the Vastu Shastra tradition. And the temple architect late. Sri Hari Prasad Sompura confirmed this practice in present times also. The Indian architects have thus distinguished between the positioning of the icon, that is Pratima, 
having form and the linger sign of undifferentiated supreme being. The finial of the shikara rises exactly above the linger, but not exactly above the cult icon. Shiva linger and the linger uh, in the met, uh, in the center of the garbha guru, which you see here. We can see the doctrinal unfolding from the unmanifest linga to manifest unmanifest Sadashiva in the hall and Mahesha's images placed in cardinal niches of the sanctum. These cardinal niches, these three, oh, sorry. On the exterior wall of the temple, there are hundreds of images Several images of Shiva are there, but they are the lesser aspects of Shiva, which are shown. There are also snake goddesses in the corners. There are numerous figures, the multitude. Cunningham counted 646 figures on the exterior of this temple. Shiva images in the three Banga do not have the majesty of the great God, which you see here but they, they seem to represent the lesser aspects of Shiva. Sura Sundari, the ubiquitous uh, motif in Indian art, continues to be depicted in temples built in conventional style. So many are seen also in the Hathi Singh's temple in Ahmedabad, which is uh, currently built. As auspicious motifs, they occupy an important place in sculptural art of temples from the 8th century onwards, several such figures, and there are texts like Shiranava, which give different types of Sura Sundaris, as you see here. A couple or Mithuna is an auspicious motif in Indian art associated with fruitfulness and prosperity. Auspicious couples on the doors recognized in 6th century texts, Brihat Samhita, as Mangala or Shubha luck bringing. Even earlier couples decorated cave three of second, third century. Here we see on the Devgat temples, the couples on the doors, auspicious couples, and also at Khajuraho on the doors. Couples are seen in the recesses of the wall of several temples of Khajuraho, graceful couples of the Devi Jagdamba and Chitragupta temples you see there. The architect of the Lakshmana temple is the first one to place erotic groups on the juncture wall that joins the hall. This is the hall part and the Garbhagruha part, Sanctum part. This is a Sandhara temple with inner circumambulation path on the juncture wall, he puts conjoined figures. We had seen balancing of opposites on the vestibule in the interior of temple where Goddess Parvati was shown doing tapas. You see the difference between the Kajuraho architect has made the difference between the Sandara temple with inner ambulatory Pradakshina Patha, sorry, and the Nirandhara temples, which don't have inner Pradakshina, they, uh, the devotees would do Pradakshina from outside, whereas here the devotees would do circumambulation inside the shrine. Now the architect of the Lakshman temple is the first one to put erotic groups on the juncture wall that join the hall and the sanctum. We see here the Vamana temple, which is a Nirandhara temple, which has no inner Pradakshina. And there are only divinities which are shown here on the juncture part. There are no erotic figures on this part in the Vamana temple. But in the Vishwanatha temple on the juncture wall, like what we saw on the Lakshmana temple, we see erotic figures. So the Khajuraho architect allots a spacious place to the conjoined figures on the juncture wall of the temple.
the geometry of the compositional scheme of the head down pose of the Kandarya Mahadev temple reminds us of the Kamakala Yantra, which is, which is shown here on the right of the text called Shilpa Prakasha. Shilpa Prakasha enjoins placing of the Kamakala Yantra to protect the monument. Also mentions that the lines of the Yantra have to be hidden from the gaze of the uninitiated. To hide these lines, to, uh, the architect has to depict erotic figures in the lines of the Yantra. These are the lines of the Yantra. To hide them, this, such figures are made. That would give, as the text says, it would give delight to people. So on the Kandarya Madhav, the juncture wall, you see these erotic figures and it has multiple functions of sexual symbolism. One is the magic, it is, these are magical defensive. They conceal a yantra, then they give delight to people. But four, yogic philosophical concept through the Sandhya Bhasha, that is tantric code language, they are supposed to give. This. So these are the four uh, functions of the sexual symbolism on the juncture wall of the temples. The head down pose seems to embody through the enigmatic language, the tan that is the tantric code language with double and triple meanings, the yogic philosophical symbolism of the unification of the two breaths, prana and apana, sun and moon, pingla and ida nadis, the polar opposites in the middle path of the central nadi sushumna in order to lead the yogi beyond the phenomenal world. Through the significant placement on the juncture of the hall of devotees, that is jivas, and the home house of the divinity Shiva, the juncture of the phenomenal and transcendental world, the architect priest conveys the non-dual state of timelessness in which there is neither day nor night, neither sun, nor moon. You see the matrikas, the mothers on the plinth of the Kandarya Mahadev temple, the architect of the two Shiva temples, Kandarya Mahadev and the Vishwanath, both have placed these matrikas. But you see Ganesha here, there, and the first matrika, Brahmani, is here. The matrikas, they start with Brahmani, Maheshwari, Kaumari, like that. The first matrika is shown on this side. So when the devotee does Pradakshina, he sees the last matrika uh, here, Chamunda, on this side. Just a minute. So these are the seven matrikas. You know, the crumb is decided the way they have to be presented. So this is Veerabhadra, Brahmani, Maheshwari, Kaumari, uh, Vaishnavi, Varahi, uh, Aindri, and Chamunda, and Ganesh. So they are placed this way. So Brahm Brahmani is here, and the last matrika, Chamunda, is shown here. So how that can be? So when the devotee is doing Pradakshina, circumambulating the temple, he first sees Ganesh, and the last matrika first. So I was talking about this to a devotee of Shiva, and he says that, but the matrikas themselves are doing pradakshina. Therefore, the first matrika is shown here, and the last matrika is here. And we also walk around the Shiva's mountain. So commemorating the temple in the direction led by the matrikas and Ganesh, by encircling the temple, we also become a part of its yantra-like rhythm and come nearer to its vibration to the cosmos that the temple symbolizes in its geometric order and images, Nama Rupa of the formless, timeless Nishkala that Shiva is. Khajuraho offers some and unique images such as Vishnu, of, uh, ordaining devotees to observe silence regarding the secrets of the doctrine. We saw these images earlier, Chatushpada, Sadashiva, 
and uh, Chaturbhuja Temple, Narayana. So we so these are some important unique images which Kajuraho has offered. The two great temples of Kajuraho. We had a closer view of these two integrated temples, the Lakshmana, which is there, and the Kandariya Mahadev. The architects have meticulously planned the iconic schemes of the Lakshman and the Kandariya Mahadev temples and interpreted the temples as models of the cosmos. Through the iconic scheme of the Lakshmana temple, the architect has recreated Vishwarupa, the universal form of Vishnu. And in the great Kandariya Mahadev temple, the Shivalinga is the cosmic axis around which graded manifestations of Shiva are arranged. The architect has presented the temple as an ordered whole. The seven matrikas eternally dance around the still center of the Kandariya Mahadev and the planetary divinities, Grahas, revolve around the Vaikuntha temple image as Mount Meru, the center of the universe. The architects, acharyas and patrons of Karjura Vahaka are no more but they have left a magnificent legacy of the, this visual language for us to read. Thanks. <laughs>